Let's go. <laughs> hello. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Hope the week has been uh, treating you. I hope the week has been. <laughs> hope you're all doing pretty all right. Hope you're all doing swell. Um, like the stream title says today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be talking about how to draw dragons. I'm going to be going very briefly over... Um, it really has been so true. It has been treating me. Um, we are going to be going over... Uh, dragon anatomy, very, very basic dragon anatomy. I'm not gonna go too, too deep, but I'm gonna more, more so than like the hard anatomy, what I'm actually gonna do is gonna dive into the history of uh, why dragon anatomy is the way that it is, uh, which won't take long, <laughs> hopefully. It's gonna be a chill stream? Yeah, I'd say it's gonna be a little more of a chill stream. I don't really, I don't really plan on making the lesson too long. There really isn't too much to talk about. Um, but that is what we are going to be doing today. Um, where is, where is all my stuff? I, I was like super frantic. I was like last minute downloading new music. It's still from the same artist, uh, Bandcamp, Stevia Sphere. We need to, we need to make that, uh, Joe, I keep on forgetting to check the, the description every time. I feel like we should make it so like, it's just in the description at all times. Just like music from blank. Hang on, let me just do that really quick. Like I know the, I know the, the link off the top of my head, but yeah, I, I got it. I got it for you. Don't worry. But, um, I feel like we should just put that in every single one and then just change out the artist for each stream. So I keep forgetting. Um, but regardless, how long is the stream? Uh, like two hours. We'll be done here in two hours. But before we get going, those of you who have been here 
uh, enough know the drill because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes, sub badges, or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that I have a limited amount, of, limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone I was so close to doing that perfect this time dang it <laughs> so close oh well but yes that is what we are going to be uh we're gonna be doing dragon anatomy today but before we do that we didn't get to do it last week so we are going to be talking about submissions art submissions yes we're gonna be doing art submissions from the discord um this month is pokemon uh original pokemon pokemon fusions that kind of thing kid if you decide to spam in my spam in my chat you're gonna get kicked <laughs> um so this piece by art of the fart my partner would love your username <laughs> this is a really cool um piece what was this one called oh shoot i lost the file name Hang on, let me open up the... Let me open up where I've saved these files. Uh, this is a Pokemon by Art of the Fart. Their name was Ethros. It's a really cool concept, more of like a legendary Pokemon um, kind of idea. I love the colors. It, I can't zoom in on this one, but it's really cool to see... Um, like the, there's a lot of uh, like textures in the background and in the character them and like the Pokemon themselves. It, it's really really cool. It's a, it's a piece of eye candy to, to like zoom in on, um, but I unfortunately cannot uh, on this. But you're just gonna have to trust me or join the Discord. <laughs> See where everybody's uh, you know submitted their work. Um, really fun ballads of colors. They had like a whole like thing uh, written out for this this Pokemon. Like they had like different entries for both Scarlet and Violet, and I think that's really cool. Um, Really well done. Really well done. Thank you for submitting. This next submission by Birdie is very... It's a fairy type, I believe. Very, um... I think that's what that symbol is, right? Or it's fairy or psychic. Okay, go. <laughs> fairy type symbol. Right? Yes. <laughs> it's fairy type. Um, so this is a fairy type Pokemon. I like the... Well, it's very thematic. We're, we're popping up on Valentine's Day soon. A very heart-themed Pokemon. I think this is a really cute design. I like the... I like the simplicity. And you had three Evos. Very nice. Or maybe it's just three variants. I'm not sure. But this is very, very nice. Really, really cute stuff. Mihar, Mupid, and Malove. I love it. I love it. Very, very similar to like uh, mice or uh, like lemurs or something like that. I like it. This is very, very cute. Thank you for submitting. This next one. Oh, this is not by Birdie. Hang on. Or is it? Did I? No, this one's by DJ Prius. My apologies. I wrote the thing in the top corner wrong, but this one's by DJ Prius in the Discord. Um, I am like a huge fan of designs that include like <laughs> that include like two eyes in like one socket. I think that that's really, really cool. Um, like it's such a fun design. Like you start with like the one big socket with these evolutions. They're water flying type, very fun. I love, like, it, it starts with, like, one big eyeball, and then it starts to split in the second Evo, and then it's just two in the third. I think that's really fun. This is a really cool design. Thank you so much for submitting. I apologize that I got your name wrong on this, but it's DJ Prius is the one who did this one. This one is a Pokefusion by Midori Okami. I love the, the Trapinch Whimsicott. I love that you, you gave them, like, this big fluffy mane. <laughs> so cute um i love it i there was a few did a few i think this one was my favorite though i think i have a soft spot for trapinch and for whimsicott just because like trapinch is just really cute and i love gen 5 so like whimsicott spoke to my soul um but yeah no really really nice like with all the pokemon fusions that you did and like this one too like i love the the sharp line work it's very flat i've been enjoying a flat art style recently and this one's really really cute well well done Thank you so much for submitting. This next one is by Mimi in the Discord. Another three-tiered Evo. It's like a it's like a like a long-tailed rabbit almost. It's it's a Blahop? 
Lapalouis and Orajo. I'm like <laughs> French Orajo. Um, what a cool concept. It's like you start with like a little like teardrop and then like it gets angrier. So it's like it's so it starts to get like clouds above its head that are attached to the tail. And then it's like it gets like a thundercloud that goes over. What a cool concept. This is a really, really fun uh, Evo. I like the I like the progression of these three. Really well done. Um, it's like it kind of it like condensates into clouds above. It's really, really fun. I love it. Thank you so much for submitting, Mimi. Oh, and then it goes into, it goes, into, it's final Evo is electric water. That's so cute. Uh, I think this is the second to last one. This one is by Underland Arts. Uh, thank you for placing your own name <laughs> on your work. Uh, this was by Underland Arts. This one was really cool. I saw this. I'm like, what? These are so, these are so awesome. I love the like, uh, like you have the description to the height. Where's the arrowhead? What's its helm? What's once? It wears the arrowhead once in its helm as a brooch. Always ready to summon groups of Ponchette to victory. Ooh, English. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I love this. I love the the, the balance of color. Um, it's a really interesting, like, Evo to, like, the pre-Evo, which was Ponchette. Um, I like that they're very much like chess pieces. And I think that's a really cool, that's a really cool concept. Um, psychic rock type. It's cool that, like, you made the psychic rock type because, like, I would have guessed, like, dark type because of, like, the color palette. But I, I love this. I think it's really cool. Really, really fun design. Uh, and this last one is by Ziggy. By comparison to the other ones, this one is, like, uh, like in, like, an area. <laughs> like, these Pokemon are in an area. Beautiful stuff, though. I love the color palette. I love how regal, I assume the third Evo in the back is, um, like, the feather texture and, like, they're, they're all on, like, in like a foresty area very nice really really cute um yeah I, I don't know what else to say about this i just really like it <laughs> i'm a really big fan of like a uh, like blue uh blue sided analogous palettes so i'm like or colder analogous palettes so like i love the like the teal to to indigo to purple and then like instead of using pure white you used uh like a yellowish I get like a cream color instead. I think that that's really cool. Because um, I'll always say it's always better to use like a cream rather than a pure white. But all right, I believe that's all. Yes, yes, that's all of the submissions for this week. Thank you guys so much for submitting for this week again. Exclamation point Discord, join the Discord if you want to submit stuff um, for the themes for each month. Um, and once again, this month is either Pokemon Fusions or just Fakemon, make your own Pokemon. Um, Join the Discord, say hi to other art nerds, submit your work, and maybe you'll get reviewed. Um, but all right. Cool submissions this week. Yeah, they're great. It's a good time. Okay. Mm. So, here's the thing about Dragon Anatomy, right? I was seeing a bunch of you, uh, like, while I was going through the intro and all these submissions. Uh, I, I, I was watching a bunch of you ask like, hey, what dragons are we going over? What are we doing? I don't like teaching how to's. Like, I'm pretty sure like if you've been here for long enough, you know that I don't like teaching how to's. Um, and I did mention that what we're gonna be doing today is not necessarily, hey, this is how you draw dragons more, hey, this is kind of where the traditional dragon came from and I want you to do something different. That's kind of what I'm talking about right now. So, the thing with dragons is, uh, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, dragons, if, if you, <laughs> sorry to be this kind of person, right, but dragons, right, are fictional, right? Dragons are not necessarily things that actually exist. So with things that don't exist, there is no concrete anatomy for how to draw them, right? So let's talk a bit about that. Concepts taken. The initial.
love Jesse's handwriting. It's so relaxed, but good. Thank you. This is me trying to make it, like, slightly cleaner. Very proud to the taking from the initials of having dinosaur puns, fantastical stories, name. That's not the right word. It should be slayed. So, dragons were concepts taken from the initial discovery of dinosaur bones. When bones and fossils, that kind of thing, were discovered for the first time, it was like, oh my god, these things are huge, they're behemoths, this is like, this is crazy, you know what that is? I'm gonna call that a dragon, right? They, and then from that came fantastical stories made about giant reptiles that were slayed in intense battle in usually a medieval setting, right? With modern day dragons, we have stuff like if we go to D&D, you have like the actual dragons, you have Dragonborn, I play as Dragonborn, right? Uh, if you go to like, I guess the furry community, you've got like fuzzy dragons that are more cutesy dragons. Uh, different communities, you have like the half people, half dragons, you see a lot of VTubers do that, right? It's like dragons, the concept of a dragon has been spread so thin that it no longer really resembles the initial idea of what a dragon was which is why it's so tough to teach but if we want to go back to that initial idea of what dragons are dragons were initially uh you know birthed from dinosaurs dinosaurs are the ancestors of birds right rather than referencing lizards when people say like i'm gonna reference a lizard to draw a dragon i'm gonna reference this reference that a reptile birds are the way to go when it comes to referencing any kind of dragon full body anatomy if you wanted to stick to that right of course you can like you know mess around with it doesn't necessarily mean that sorry i'm opening a window so i'm gonna talk a bit louder doesn't necessarily mean that you have to there are lots of different things you can reference when it comes to drawing dragons, right? You don't necessarily have to always reference birds. Uh, when I designed corn for the first time, I did reference a raven. Um, but if you kind of wanted to break down that skeleton in a way, right? If you wanted to, if you wanted to break down the skeleton in some ways, a bird is generally the way to go. So let's break that up. Let let me find a bird skeleton. Somebody give me a bird. Give me any bird. Chat, give me a bird. Owl? Okay. Owl skeleton. If you gave me a bird, I was gonna look up its skeleton. I'll look up a few of these and we'll go over them. None of these images are good enough. <laughs> what is this? No, I'm sorry. Hang on. I need to... <laughs> no, I don't want to save the image. I want to open it. Okay. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> What's up with the? What's up with this? Um, I love looking at terrible skeletons. Okay. Let's take a look at an owl skeleton really quick. Okay. So, if we're taking a look at this skeleton, oops, we can very easily break this down, right? I've already talked about birds in a previous stream. Um, I'm not going to talk about, like, this skeleton in complete detail. Um, 
But what this entails, right, is you have, you know, the skull and then like a beak or something like that, right? And then you've got like, you know, the spine, which kind of goes down like this, curves at the thoracic and then goes back down here. You've got the giant sternum <laughs> that birds have. The olecranon. No, that's not the olecranon. Olecranon's at the elbow. This is the acromion process at the top here, which comes down into the humerus, and then these, which make up the wings. And we've got the pelvis down here. This is technically their femur. Right? No, they have they have a separate, they have a different kind of bone, but it's, it's a smaller one here that comes down into another big bone here that comes down into Yep, big bone, two smaller ones, and then the toes like this bent backwards. I'm not trying to do this really fast. I'm <laughs> or I'm trying to do this really fast. I don't want to I don't want to spend too long on this. Right, so that's our modern day bird skeleton, right? We have something that kind of looks like that, right? Now imagine if we translated this into a dinosaur rather than a bird head, if we had something that's more Hang on, let me look at the lizard head. Lizard skull. I should get a lizard skull. They're pretty cool. Alright, let's say we had something a little bit more like the Tyrannosaurus. Let's say we've got like a... I'm not gonna actually draw the Tyrannosaurus skull, but like a, a lizard skull is more like this. But because it's a dinosaur, what if this was like a raptor, right? Think of this as if it was just a raptor, right? We've still got that same kind of... Yeah. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, right? We still got that. Rather than this giant sternum like this, we've got like a like a rib cage again. I'm not gonna actually draw in the rib cage, but <laughs> we actually had a rib cage, and then our pelvis. And some dinosaurs had long tails, which means that this tailbone is gonna be huge. It's gonna look more like that because it's an extension of the vertebrae and then we still had these legs bending backwards like this with the big talons and then we still had our arms that were bent like this instead though they weren't super long to adequate for a for a wing right this is all that a dragon is, if we break it down to its really basic terms, right? That's all that it is, really. It's just big. <laughs> it's just a bigger bird, <laughs> right? And then you can even go even further, right? Because we have our... The thing that connects our arms uh, to the top of our body is called the acromion process. The acromion process is our scapula. You can feel your scapula. It's your shoulder blade. Your shoulder blade that is attached to your collarbone, which you can also feel kind of like right below the base of your neck. All right? There's a little hard portion at the top of your shoulder that's called the acromion process. That's where the top of your femur connects to. And then your wing would probably connect somewhere on the spine of the scapula too. All right? And it's just, like, another arm shape. <laughs> but long. Right? That's it. <laughs> the way that I always see dragons is just, uh, it's birds with more steps. Right? It doesn't really, but obviously, right? Like, you can say that, like, oh. Like, but what if I don't want my dragon to have multiple legs? What if I don't want my dragon to have wings? What if I... Then just don't add it. <laughs> right? That's the thing, is like, I can break down this anatomy as much as you can, as much as I want to. This is a fantasy creature. Do whatever you want, and really, it can't be wrong. Right? It's, it's really one of those things where, like, what was voted for today 
for what I'm going to be drawing is a wyvern, right? But there were other things that I put in there. There were lindworms. There were worms. There was a drake. There was, right? There was like a classic dragon I think I put there too, right? And if you don't know what any of those are, like a lindworm just has like two arms and just the body, right? And then a worm is, ba is just a danger noodle, right? Um, there was one more that I put on there that was like a pair of wings and then no, uh, no limbs. I don't remember the name of that one. Um, wyverns, what they are is their arms are their... Their arms are their wings, right? But that's quite literally just a bird, right? If you just like replaced, if you had like a... I'm doing these really fast, right? But like if we just had like a... Like more reptilian kind of skull. And the rib cage. Like, like, if you kept that sternum, that giant sternum. The only thing that would be different from a from bird anatomy to this would just be the skull, right? A wyvern is quite literally just a bird. Alright, and then you have the legs, right? That kind of thing. But... Here's, here's my... Here's... Like, I don't want to take this to take too long, because I actually tend to take a while with dragons, but my main takeaway when it comes to drawing dragons to give to you is get creative. I think it's boring when people are like, you have to draw a dragon like this. You have to draw a dragon like that. I think dragons are such open concepts that limiting yourself to one concept of a dragon becomes super boring right like i think that it's more interesting for you to find a new way um to make a dragon like to push the idea of a dragon right and i think it's i think like how to train your dragons a really good idea like example of that right they really push that idea of what a dragon is uh, monster hunter is really good at that too really like pushing that like uh, like the the visualization of what like a dragon could be right you see a lot of horror games do that too like i think that it's 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 more interesting to get weird with a dragon than to try and stay within a concept so like i can like this is me telling you okay this is where dragons came from this is what you can think of as like a baseline but let's let's be more interesting with it right what was voted for today was unfortunately a very basic dragon, <laughs> but <laughs> that's okay. Um, we'll still go with that regardless. But all right. With that said, though, let's get into the illustration because I didn't want to take long at all with that. So again, what I am going to be drawing today is a wyvern. Um, the wyvern that I'm going to be drawing today is a, it's it's a wyvern that I've already designed, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take some liberties with him, just because I'm like, what would puddles look like if he was older, um, kind of thing. Whew, I need to go back to my concept art for this character though. <laughs> What's a wyvern? A wyvern has two legs, two wings. Uh, no, this is in my commissions, isn't it? Yeah. Where is, where is my boyfriend's commission? There it is. Is this in here? Yeah, it is. Okay. Haven't seen you use Clip Studio. Oh, okay. So the Sunday guys tend to use Clip Studio more than me. So what I kind of asked chat a while ago was like, hey, what if I just stuck to using Photoshop and then they stuck to using Clip Studio? So it's not that I've stopped using Clip. Like, Clip was never my main program to begin with. Yeah, Photoshop Fridays. That's what we were talking about. <laughs> Yeah, this is Puddles. This is my partner's. My partner plays a dra Drake Warden Ranger. Um, so Puddles is his, is his dragon. Rather than a Drake, uh, he wanted a Wyvern. So my DM was like, okay. <laughs> I 
We'll see how far I get with this one, with the idea that I have. I'll be doing another rose stream. Not anytime soon, I don't think. I realize that gross streams like really exhaust me, so like I can't I can't do them frequently. I get too tired, man. <laughs> Roasting other people's art gets boring, you know. Especially when you see the same kind of art style over and over. It's like, oh, I know that you're from Instagram. Oh, I know you're from Twitter. I know you're from Pixiv. All right. It's like, I don't know. It's just not interesting. You doing the character with puddles? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to just do puddles. I haven't drawn Pierce in a while. Dragon in the arena from Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire, probably the most realistically designed dragon in pop culture. I would disagree. Personally, I'm a big fan of smog. Also, what's the fun in realism? <laughs> You're designing a dragon, what's the fun in making it realistic? <laughs> After when I do like the, the cleanup, I keep on like. <laughs> I get to play D and D on Sunday again, so I get to interact with peers again. This is gonna be great. Oh my god, corn should not be trusted at a ball. Like <laughs> we get to go to like a ball on Sunday. It's gonna be so good. I'm so excited. How's my week been? It's been all right. I got to play in a one shot on Tuesday that was recorded. Um, I got to play a Strider, my centaur. So that was really fun. It was really fun to play a Strider. And I think that their ending was really fun. Um, so that was a good time. Um, what else did I do this week? I, I just worked like crazy this week. Like I've just been like working. tracing a spare try not to trace it if you're if you're tracing it i guess only do it if you're studying but like if you try to constrict yourself to anatomy when you're working on something fantastical it, it will end up looking really stiff so i'd actually recommend not tracing like at all if you're drawing a dragon Shoot, I might have to draw Pierce a, a mask. Because I didn't realize that we were, like, <laughs> we're going to a ball. I think we were, it was, like, a mask. I think we're doing a masquerade thing. 
I think I just said that Corn was just gonna wear like a head. How is because like how would Corn wear a wear a? How would he wear something as a disguise? He's so like obvious. Funny to me, the worm dragon is literally just a bigger worm, and they swap the letter out, and that's it. Well, kinda. I mean, it still's got it's still got a dragon's head, but like, it's just, it's it's a worm. <laughs> Corn and rock any disguise, but it's so he's so obvious. <laughs> My boy's got a triangle for a head, a mustache, and a trench coat. <laughs> True. Dresses up as a dog or one appears as dragons. Corn is a dragonborn. <laughs> Corn already has an outfit. He's he's got an outfit that he's going in for the ball. It would just meet because like it's a ball. We have to dress up fancy because we're representing somebody. Um Cause we're, we're there on a mission, and we're not just going just because this arm is too large. Um A paper bag. No. <laughs> Do you need to be so frustrated? I'm just gonna buy the tabaxi rays. LOL. <laughs> I feel. Corn is the best name ever. Yeah. Corn. Corn. I love playing as Corn. Corn is like his chosen name, but it's. It was a nickname given to him, but he kind of adopted it for himself. Goodness. This is a weird pose. I'll fix it later. There's <laughs> like there's like a couple things I can like I'm like, oh that's wrong, but I'll just I'll just work with it when I get there. Bicep would be farther back here. I don't like that. Nah. It's a weird pose. It's okay. I'll fix it. Who's Puddles? Puddles is this dragon. change the pose altogether. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. Make drawing clothes look too easy. It's not too bad if you're just sketching them. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing anything too concrete yet. Are they a water dragon? No. So Puddles is a chromatic dragon. They're a 
is a wyvern, so depending on whatever season, because Pierce is a, an eliger and elf, depending on whatever season that Pierce is in, Puddles' appearance changes. Um, so this is like the default. In in D and D, if you're a blue dragon, you actually do lightning damage. Um, so so Puddles shoots lightning <laughs> when he's blue. <laughs> It's, it's funny, knowing, like, the different, like, what they do, depending on, like, what color they are. Corn is a black dragon, so corn spits acid, uh, if you wanted to know. Yeah, so blue is lightning, red is... Oh, God. Red is fire, green is poison, and then white is cold? I believe that's it? And then corn is black, so he shoots acid. That's it. Something like that. So fun fact, if Drake had won, like the the Drake uh, dragon had won, then I would have drawn older form. I won't tell you my plans for the other ones, but if Drake had won, then it would have been older form that I would have gone with. I'm gonna make this composition huge. <laughs> Oh, an older corn. I've drawn older corn before. Um... Older corn's a weird concept. It's it's fun to it's fun to do. I did I uh, like I drew out his skull a bit ago. Um... It was it was cool to like reason out some of the anatomy. Look so happy. Puddles is a very happy dragon every time that Puddles gets to kind of hang around a little bit more. It's cool because, like, I'm a. What's it called? Because I'm a dragonborn, Pierce is a drake lord, and Pierce speaks a uh, dragon. In in D, &D it's called Draconian. Um, and because I'm a dragonborn, like, Draconian's like my first language. So we can both just, like, speak to Puddles. <laughs> can Puddles speak? Only in Draconian. Draconic, Draconian. No, Draconian's the, the species, my bad. Yeah, Draconic, that's it. I keep I keep mixing them up. But, yeah. What does he usually say? Mostly just like, like yeses and noes. <laughs> he doesn't really converse. Cause Puddles is still like a baby dragon. In campaign, he's still like a baby dragon or an adolescent dragon, I guess. Puddles and Pierce were both really fun to to design. Like when uh, when Crow came to me with the concept, he was like, "Hey, I really want this like Eldritch Elf, Drake Warden Ranger, and like the dragon shifts colors with him." I was like, "This is this is so cool! What a fun kind of idea!"
There's any creatures in D and D that just don't have a language at all, like a zombie? Ugh. Like undead is a uh, uh, is undead a language? I know undead is a it's like a type, but yeah, there are there are some species that don't speak. If you have a low enough intelligence score, then you just can't speak. Like I think it's like three and under, you can't speak. Thank you, Baloney Worm, for five for the five dollar dono. Hello. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> is the color can change sudden or gradual it's like a sudden kind of change it's a magical kind of thing so it just happens of those thank you I am struggling a little actually <laughs> Trying to get a piggyback right. It's just like, it's just like a, Puddles is just like a dog. <laughs> Very hyper, happy. You know when dogs just kind of tackle you? That kind of thing. How did I drop Puddles' tail? That's a good question. Yeah, there we go. This will just make it more intense. Getting older. Found a good pencil, we'd love to see it. Line confidence is really impressive. Thank you. I do my best. I like line art. <laughs> I train acting like a dog. Puddles is a wyvern. Um, okay, hang on. Let's minimize this. What's the name of this? Uh, Photoshop CC. This is Photoshop. Why do I use a triangular brush? Oh, for my eraser? Oh, well, this is... Normally, it's my line art brush, but uh, I've kind of turned it into my eraser as well. the canvas bigger i always find that, like when i draw a dragon like i start with a specific canvas size and then i just always have to get bigger when did i first start to draw dragons i have been drawing dragons since i was a little kid like it's just always been a thing that i've always done okay actually i don't like um, 
there was a point in my life when uh, my uncle gave me the nickname the Dragon Lady just because of how often I drew dragons. To the point where he got, I remember that he got me a custom printed t-shirt when I was a kid and it was like, oh shoot. It was one of those like, those like text ones. It was something like, it was something like, don't like, I don't remember it exactly, but it was like, don't. Don't mess with the Queen of Dragons because you will you will be delicious fried and with ketchup. Something like that. I don't <laughs> it was something along those lines. I should see I want I want his wings to be like flared upwards. That's gonna be a really big canvas space though. And I guess you know, whatever. Wee ball. <laughs> Oh, you'd buy the headphones? Well, they're real. <laughs> they're real headphones. I have Logitech G733s with cow ear attachments. They're kind of messing up a little. I might have to start looking into new headphones again, but they're really, really nice. Like, they're super lightweight, work really nicely. They sound nice. They're just getting a little old. Runs to Amazon. Well, the the headphones themselves you can just get, but like the the attachments I bought as like a second thing on Etsy, like the three D printed headphone attachments. You can attach them to any headphones because it's just like Velcro attached to the top. Can you become a great artist like me? Uh, practice on a lot of it. Basically sell your soul to the thing that is art. Lord knows I have. So let's fix that. Sold it already. Guess I'm doomed. Then all that's left is practice. Which means you gotta work extra hard. That's all.
Okay. I'm doing something. <laughs> this is stream eighty two dash one. Practice for over an hour a day at times that I got my first drawing tablet. I think I draw for upwards to like five hours every day. Something like that. It's a slow day if I draw for less than an hour. <laughs> 82 streams, something like that. Steampunk dragon would be so cool. It's the same fabric they use as steampunk sails as a wing membrane. Oh, you mean like the same texture? That would be pretty cool, yeah. My headphones are dying. You're gonna get the Windows connection sound. Don't worry, it's me. Have a good night, um. I know where to draw the folds and clothes, so I don't know how to draw them. Do you help? It depends on the type of fold that you're doing. Like, there's- you can literally Google types of folds and you'll find it. Like, as we also have- I think we have a video on it, but there's- there's quite literally like a- like, you can get a diagram to- to show you different kinds of folds. sitting at a desk to use a sketchbook. I rarely sit at a desk when I draw in my sketchbook. So it isn't it isn't a PC specs command. It's um it's what I draw on. I actually don't remember the command. It's like device Jesse or something like that. Yeah, exclamation point device, Jesse. I go outside on a nice day and break my ske sketchbook. What I wish I did. No, it's it's that you should do that. That's a really good thing to do. I I tend to do that.
I draw for 10 minutes a day, four hours if you count doodling in the classes in the math textbook. Valid. Yeah, no, it's because I draw for my job, right? <laughs> so like, even, even if like, like if you didn't count how much I draw for my job, like it's, it's about an hour a day, two hours a day. If I, if I only counted, like, what I drew for my job, it would be about, like, eight hours a day, maybe. Well, not eight hours, my bad. It's, like... <sighs> okay, so personal work tends to be about two hours. Non-personal work, like commission work and stuff like that, tends to be about five. It's about seven hours a day, usually. I did not just erase the face. I did. What are you going to do about it? This is called being dissatisfied with what you've illustrated. <laughs> you restart. For square or circular brushes? Oh, square. Square, easily. Like, I, I way prefer square brushes. And if it's not a square, then it's definitely, like, omega textured. What do I do for a job? This is my job. <laughs> I stream for this channel. I'm one of the instructors, exclamation point classes. I'm one of the teachers. Um, I do commission work on the side. I'm a designer for a D&D show. Um, yeah, my commission work is usually for streamers. I do some starting soon streams. I do thumbnails. I do um, PNG tubers sometimes. Any tips for beginner digital artists? Draw what you love. If you start off by trying to learn heavy theory in the beginning, you're gonna burn yourself out and grow a hatred for art. Do you think I started drawing with theory? I didn't actually start applying theory until I was maybe 16. <laughs> Draw what you love. It'll also kind of help you uh, go in the direction that you might want to be in. If you end up deciding to do it professionally. If you don't, that's totally fine too. Keep art as a hobby. I'm probably not gonna like color this one either, by the way. I might just do this one with like lines only. Art is something you feel, not calculated. It depends on the person. Uh, some some illustrators would argue with you on that one. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. But it's there's there's some artists who would be like, no, that's not true, and then they'd list off all the scientific things about art to you. 
Um, is a really, really, uh, Tom Fox, I think his name is, really prolific illustrator, and he's like, he's like, I draw, he draws for the skill, not for the emotion. Which is, like, valid. I can't ever imagine working like that, but, like, I mean, some people do, I guess. What am I naming them? Oh, this character? Oh, this character's not mine. <laughs> this is my partner's character. Um, my partner's D&D character in the, this dragon. Uh, this is Pierce. Pierce Dorigan. Um, and then his dragon puddles. Pierce is an Eldrin Elf Ranger. So Pierce changes. I think he's a little bit homebrewed. So Pierce, I think, rather than changing per long rest, Pierce changes like on the fly for short rest. Do I actually sketch with black? Uh, yeah, usually. This time I chose blue, but I've been sketching with black recently. What brush do you use? This one is a purchased brush from uh, Gr True Grit Supply. Um, some of mine are like homemade and some of them are purchased. I can't offer them because uh, I purchased them. Um, and there's licensing agreements, so I cannot offer my brushes, but I can tell you where I got them. Uh, a lot of them are like the Kyle brushes, you know, like the Kyle T. Webster brushes. Um, this one right now is from True Grit Supply, though. Um, they make brushes for Photoshop, CSP, and Procreate, I believe. Um, and they also offer just texturing in general. Any tips for painting? Like traditionally or digitally? Digitally, don't work too soft or you'll never get a concrete feeling. Traditionally, don't paint your eyes with white. Go closer to the, um, unless if you're going like with for a flat gouache painting. But like if you're trying to blend, then use like a yellow instead. What kind of balance do you recommend for using reference is just kind of eyeing it? I mean, this whole illustration was all eyed. So, <laughs> I have not, other than like my own illustration for what the dragon looks like, I have never, <laughs> I use zero reference. Um, but it's, it depends, I think. It depends on what you're doing. Um, if you realize that you're starting to copy your reference, that's when you're going too far. You're only allowed to do that for full finished illustrations if you took the image yourself. Which is what I would do um, when I worked on uh, my comic, which I don't really anymore. But uh, Grayson had a character who had a... He was a demon. He had like a pig skull for a head. So I purchased a pig skull and would take pictures of it in different... It was a Bobby Rusa, uh, which is like a, like a... Uh, what's it called? Like a warthog of sorts. Or a boar. And I was like, okay. So I, I purchased the skull and I would take pictures of it in different angles so I would know what his head would look like in different angles. I would just trace over it for speed. I prefer digital. I prefer digital work. I, I've been getting back into traditional uh, just for fun, like for me, but I, I way prefer digital. There is something that traditional holds that digital will never be able to replicate though. There's like a grittiness to it that feels a lot nicer. Tips for watercolor, start really light and then go darker. How do I use my layers? I have two right now. <laughs> one for lines and one for sketching. 
I am I'm very similar to Iggy in which we try not to use a lot of layers. Realism or stylized, what's best for a beginner? If you're a beginner, whatever you enjoy. It literally doesn't matter. All you beginner artists in chat right now, do whatever the heck you want. Like, there is no right or wrong way to start. You know how I started? I looked up Mario characters on Google Images and I would draw them in MS Paint. And I would also take my big sketchbook and hold my, like, HB2 pencil... <laughs> and just draw away, you know? Like the terrible plastic ones you get from Dollarama. Like, who cares, man? If you're a beginner, don't worry about actually getting serious yet. You get serious the more- the older you get, you know? <clears throat> Any tips when it- to clothes when it comes to thickness and texture? We've got a stream about that. Only beginner artists, like, they're a different breed. Well, it, you know, it's a different a different level, right? I tend to teach the more advanced artists, so, like, I don't I don't tend to teach uh, for our classes, exclamation point classes, that's a level one class, uh, is the, the more inexperienced artists. I, I teach level two and up, so it's, like, the advanced classes and then the ones for, like, portfolio level students. Over to an animal skull art video? We have. Um, we have, uh, like, different animal anatomy streams that we've done in the past, which is just me explaining, like, the, the skeletal anatomy of uh, different kinds of animals. We've got, we have a few of them. We've got, like, we've got a mammal one, we've got a bird one, we've got a reptile one, and I think we have one for fish, and I think that's it. Right? Something like that. I don't remember completely. no idea what level my art is at, then don't worry about it. Like, it's literally- it's something you shouldn't worry about. Like, I, I don't think, until you get to, like, a professional level. Like, I think that, like, being able to sense what level you're at gets easier the stronger you get at art. Uh, what level of classes would you think I would be? Mine, reimagined. Like, you would be able to take my classes. Easy. Like, like level two and up? Easily. I think you'd be fine with level three. Like, I don't, I don't think. <laughs> I think you might get bored with level two classes, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Is this my first stream? I've been streaming here since 2020. Where you been? <laughs> Sorry, that was, maybe that was a little mean. I don't know. Hi, welcome in. <laughs> uh, I'm a good artist on traditional, but I stuck at digital. How long does it take to adjust? I started drawing digitally when I was 13. I think I properly ad adjusted to digital art, like properly, properly adjusted in like a year. Like in terms of like just being able to hold a pen steady. It was maybe a year, a few months, give or take. Uh, it'll be close to a decade now.
and you only have traditional, I can't afford the digital stuff. You want to know something funny? If you have a phone, you can download Ibis Paint. That's free. It's all free. Medibang's also free. You can get, like, you got a phone already? You download that, you work with your finger. Some people swear by working with their fingers. I, I can't draw with my finger. I think it's not precise enough, but like if you want to try that, totally cool. Or you can even just buy like a stylus, a really cheap stylus. There you go. You got an iPad? Procreate, $10. Easy. Like personally, I don't like Ibis Paint, but again, people <laughs> swear by Ibis Paint. It's the same thing with Krita, you know? Like I, I, I have programs that I work with, but I think it's just because I'm used to them, right? I think every program's fine as long as you get used to them first. Respect to the artists who draw with their fingers or mouse, you scare me. I have a, I have a friend, uh, and they work with a trackpad, and I'll never understand. I'm like, how do you work with a trackpad in MS Paint, of all things? I'm like, that's crazy. Like, absolutely not. Your poor fingers. Like, <laughs> you must be dying. <laughs> like, it seems so uncomfortable. Any mythical creatures? We have a mythical creature stream <laughs> that we've done a while ago. Uh, not that one though, because that is considered uh, not not kosher uh, for Native Americans. So, as much as I like the folklore behind that one, I wouldn't cover it. Make a playlist for that creature. We need to make a playlist for the creature anatomy vids. We really do, right? Like, there's, there's like, I think there's like, like five of them. They're like the animal anatomy ones. If I remember after stream, I'll, I'll see if I can make one. I don't think it's coffee the way he's acting. What do you mean? <laughs> What does that be? Elab I'm gonna need you to elaborate. <laughs> if it spills, it's for puddles, true. <laughs> I'm learning to do poses. Do I learn about muscles? Muscles should be like one of the last things you learn about. Fluidity first, muscles second. Gesture first, muscle second. That's the one. You can apply your muscles onto your gesture afterwards. Because I find that people who get stuck on anatomy first tend to make their, their, their work ends up being really stiff. Like they don't really understand how to loosen it back up. See if I remembered to, to paint his nails. <laughs> okay. I use my siblings as references when I need cool poses. Perfect. I've I've done that before. <laughs> Blood 
black nail supremacy, so true. I bought a UV lamp recently, so I need to get gel nail polish. It's a good place to start with anatomy and good poses. Um, go to a park. Like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> See poses in real life. The ones that are taken photos of tend to be, like, more staged. Oopsies. The more staged they are, the less accurate information you're getting. So gesture is all about getting the pose in a short amount of time. So if you're giving yourself all the time in the world, you're automatically overworking the pose. So it's better if you go to a live place where you have maybe like five seconds to draw something at max. Like, understand your basic structures first, and then just take it to the field. How do I recommend drawing hands? Use rectangles, not ovals. When did I decide to be serious about my art? When I was about 13. I started taking commissions when I was about 14, I think. And I've been doing commission work since. seems like the type who would wear bunny slippers. I mean, I can't ask my boyfriend to confirm, but I'm just gonna make that estimation now. <laughs> you also use screenshots for movies? You totally can. A hustle from a young age. I, I had the... I, I was lucky to come from an artist family, so I, like, very early on, I was able to grab, like, people who would need artists. At one point, I got commissioned by my, my art teacher in high school. It was actually a couple times, and I remember before we, <laughs> before we left for a, what's it called, for a field trip, she was like, oh, just wait, and, like, she reaches into her purse and hands me like a twenty dollar bill, and I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> My classmates were like, "What? Did, what? <laughs> what did you do?" Why are the slippers sad? You've never seen bunnies like this. I think they kind of like. <laughs> what platform do I offer commissions? Right now it's Twitter. I My commissions are closed um, at the moment. I have a really long lineup of commissions, <laughs> so I'm not taking any at this time. Um, like, they're not open to the public. My friends are still commissioning me every once in a while, but uh, in terms of, like, public commissions, I cannot take them at this time. I will put up commission info when that becomes available. But if you ever wanted to see, you know, how I work, because, you know, it's one thing to see my layers on stream, it's another thing to actually experience them and how they work. What is it? Exclamation point Patreon? Exclamation point membership? I think it's Patreon, right? Exclamation point Patreon. Check out some of the working files that are up on there. 
And some pretty chunky ones. I feel like drawing, but I feel sick. Get some rest. It's better to better to get some rest rather than try and force it. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm far stronger with people <laughs> than I am with dragons, as much as I love drawing dragons. Bears and boxers and briefs, guy. <laughs> That's not a question for me. <laughs> not my character. Procreate a good program to draw? Yeah, it's great. Again, I don't personally use it, but I've 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 used it before. Like I prefer my my really crazy <laughs> programs over something as simple as Procreate, but it's still a really good program. Have I ever had to reject an offer or commission work that you felt was inappropriate? I'm trying to think. Not not inappropriate. I have had to pass on commissions before though. Like not not because they're inappropriate, just because like I, I didn't have the time to do them. So I was like, hey, I know another artist whose commissions are open right now if you want to ask them instead. Luck I'm very lucky to have had really good commissioner commissioners up to this point. Like I haven't had anybody who I'm like, okay, no, I'm not taking your your crap. But like I've had I've had stories of people who have had to reject commissions that they didn't like. I'm a very open artist, like I don't really I'm it's there's very little that I'll say no to. <laughs> Obviously there's like there's like obvious things that I won't draw, but there's like a like in terms of illustration the work is there's very little that I that I wouldn't do. The dragon's name puddles. Yes. Do I check Discord often? I am on Discord like every day. <laughs> I live on Dis Discord is open right now. This doesn't mean that I'll reply to your DM. Oh my god, wait. Evianon, are you in chat right now? Sorry. <laughs> One of our member Discord members just drew Strider. I'm like, oh. Thank you. This is so cute. Hang on. Can I share it on stream? <laughs> I love this. You did my child so much justice. Thank you. He's. You drew him so cute. <laughs> this is so good. Thank you. They're so cute. I was so. I had so much fun designing Strider. They're so cute. You got their energy perfect. <laughs> <laughs> my little hyper, my little hyper uh, centaur. <laughs> you got them so good. Thank you so much. <laughs> the tail wagging. It's so true. My little ibex. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so good. I was still the skeleton open. Oh my god. Thank you. Lord. I feel blessed. <laughs> That's so cute. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, it was. I only get to play Strider once, man. So sad. If I ever get to play them again, I'll do it in a heartbeat. For those who don't know, Strider is my my gender fluid uh, centaur character. I I got to play them for a, for a one shot on Tuesday. It was so fun to play this. 
bundle of energy. I drank like two coffees before I played that, that one shot coffee with chocolate powder in it. <laughs> I make myself like super hyper. Uh, for those who want to know, they were uh, a cobalt soul bunk. Copy legs? No, no, no. So Strider is a, an ibex, uh, so like a mountain goat. Um, they just have uh, they just have bandages on their on their legs. Cobalt best rice. No, 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 no. Cobalt soul. They're a monk of the cobalt soul. Uh, Strider is a Strider's a centaur, um, but their their class is a is a monk of the cobalt soul, which is like a an, like an intelligence based monk. He or they? He, she, they. Doesn't matter. The, the way that I've written Strider's characters, they're, uh, they're gender fluid. So whatever, they, they're with, okay with whatever pronouns. Um, the way that I wrote Strider is they're, they're very much, they're the type who really likes new experiences. So they think it's really interesting when people see them as different genders. So it's like, oh, you see me as more masculine, you see me as more feminine. I think that's really cool. In based monk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, or not? Well, not in, in base. It's it's more like a very intelligent kind of monk, where if you flurry, if you land a flurry of blows, yeah, uh, you can just ask the DM for all of the, the weaknesses and strengths of uh, whatever enemy you're fighting. Like you can ask for its resistances, its immunities, and they have to just give it to you. Because you just analyze them. Um, there's a really cool feat as well. You can hit somebody with an unarmed strike. Um, and they have to make a charisma save, I think. Uh, it's a DC of 15. If they fail, then they can no longer make a deliberate lie for like up to an hour or something. Or so. It's it's. They know that the effect is happening so they can subvert it. But they, they cannot make a deliberate lie. Uh, and they have disadvantage in all like charisma checks made against them. Something like that. It's a really cool subclass. Strider is Strider. Strider is indeed Strider. It was so fun to play Strider. I, I like I, I was once the one shot was over. I was like, you ever need me to play Strider again? <laughs> I will do it. Um, What's in their pants? They don't have pants. It's true. They don't wear pants. There we go. Centaur. <laughs> if an unarmed stripe does a tap on the shoulder, that's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make it like a... The, the, the cool thing about it, too, the unarmed strike is literally just like you have to land it, but you can make it not deal damage. So it could just be like a slap across the face or like a tap on the shoulder, right? Like you can just make it like... It's super cool. <laughs> like you can flavor it to not... Uh, make it take damage. It's really good. It's pretty busted. It's really cool. I never had to use it. <laughs> but, like, I did get to use the, um, like, I landed a flurry of blows, and I was like, I want to know all the resistances and stuff like that. Um, and we got to, we knew that, like, our, the, uh, the final boss of the one shot, um, was, res was immune to all non-magical attacks. So, Barbarian luckily had a magical axe. <laughs> what animal has the most similarity with the anatomy of a dragon? We talked about this. Birds. Burbs. Joanne's our lovely mod.
opinion on power building. Uh, my partner power builds sometimes. I generally don't care. I'm not a builder. Like, here's, here's the thing. is like, I'm not much of, like, a, hey, I want to power build. I want to build this character like crazy. I think it's cool when you do, but I'm, like... I I am I play D and D for the story. <laughs> I want to play with interesting characters, and I want to be an interesting character, and that's all. I personally don't care. If you're having fun, so what? How many colors should be in a simple color scheme? Dying over here. Max three. Maximum three. <laughs> Work with a triadic scheme. Trust me. <laughs> or work with a complementary scheme. A split. Either work with a triadic or a split complementary scheme. Three hues max. Strider is a triadic scheme with the traditional primaries: blue, red, and yellow. My favorite dragon from a video game? That's tough. Um, you know, the God of War dragons are pretty cool. Every time there's something reptilian in Legend of Zelda, even if it's not a dragon, I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> I did like Valu. Valu the dragon. I did like Valu a lot in The Wind Waker. Um... Landia from Kirby Ret uh, Return to Dreamland. Is that it? Yeah, Landia, right? The three-headed dragon? Or four-headed. Four-headed dragon. Yeah, I really liked Landia when I was a kid. I don't think that Dinoblade counts, because Dinoblade's like a phoenix, but I think they're pretty cool too. An experience I draw. I've, I've talked about like how I just drew dragons like crazy when I was a kid. Dragons are one of my strengths when it comes to drawing creatures. Like, I think that dragons are pretty pretty simple nowadays, but, like, I want to get into drawing uh, weirder dragons. Are the dragon snouts right or just animal snouts and heads in general i would be totally real with you i i sit here and i'm like does that feel right cool and that's the, <laughs> that's it <laughs> i wish i had a better explanation for you i'm so sorry like and that's literally it i just sit there and i'm like does it feel right yeah all right cool we go with it song is this? Oh, I was like, I was like, I don't recognize this. <laughs> Can never get it to look right or just enjoy the head it hurts. Yeah, I think, I think one of the things that I think of as well is just the general 3D form that I know it should follow. Like, it's like you have like a very similar to like wolves, I guess. It's like an extended hexagonal Prism. Kind of like that. It's like a pencil, almost. He took a pencil and just squeezed one end. Did I talk about drawing dog snouts? Is that a thing I did? Oh man. <laughs> Bro, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Thank you. 
Can't do wolves either. I think when I was a kid, I really struggled with cats. Like, I was alright with dogs. I was alright with wolves and foxes. It was cats that I was really bad at. And then, uh... And then suddenly I learned the majesty of tabaxis. And that's like, I was like, alright, we're all good. <laughs> cats are liquid, so true. Dog, cat, or animal person. I love them all. I love them all. I do prefer cats over dogs. Like, just because I don't have the energy for a dog. But I... I, I love animals. I just... I like animals. <laughs> I think they're neat. I think they're very neat. Rabbit is liquid. She slipped through the my grasp like no one's business. Time to try trying a dragon again. Let's go. Bearded Reedling. Oh, yes. I love this bird. Why he built like that? I love him. Round boy. It's an egg. It's just an egg. <laughs> Why you built like that? I love this bird. They're so good. Yeah, this is another bird that I really like. Uh, is it you? No. What are you called? Oh yes, these boys, hang on. Look at him. I have to zoom in and this image sucks, but he's really cute. <laughs> He's gotta trust me. <laughs> small, very small, very good, a child. Tawny frog mouths are a good time. Love the tawny frog mouth. I love the 144p bird. Me too. Thank you. 
trying to draw this pretty fast because I'm like, I don't want the body to take forever. Like, I knew I was going to do lines only for this one, but I'm like, I really don't want it to take, like, ages. Like a bow. It does look like a bow! Oh, I love patoos. Patoos are so weird. Patoo birds. <laughs> Who did I give a pot to? to? I, I, I remember giving somebody a familiar. Oh! I remember who I gave a pot to. to. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, I can't check how much battery is left in this one. It's okay. I'll just unplug it because I'm pretty sure it's been plugged in all day. familiar with a robe uh they're a druid to be fair rogues are pretty broken to begin with goodness why is my stream preview so behind I don't think I've ever heard the full version of this song before. <laughs> See, marshals are weak, but rogues exist are marshals, so. I play a barbarian. I think I think corn's pretty strong. <laughs> I like having the highest AC, <laughs> or not the highest AC, the highest HP in the in the party. <laughs> also, like, who cares? <laughs> Just play what you think is fun. Like, I have a I have a warlock who's just a dude. Like, he's just a human. Like, I like I didn't make it like a custom lineage or anything. I'm like, I don't know. I thought it'd be funny. Child with the most HP. Oh yeah. Level 5 corn is like 78 HP or something like that. Cassowaries are a good time. I just like birds. Like, you, like all, all birds. I love birds. My favorite animal, the fennec fox. You can see what I use to draw with exclamation point device. Device Jesse, my bad. Exclamation point device Jesse, and you'll get you'll get what I draw with. Ravens are a good time, yes. When I played level 20 barbarian once with so much HP. Yeah, I ax we did rolled HP for this campaign. I rolled max. <laughs> I rolled max. We we started at level three, and I rolled uh, I rolled max HP. And I was like, let's go. <laughs> I don't even remember what I had at level three, but it was cr I never got below like a quarter. I think the like one of the more recent combats we had was the first time I dropped below half health. And I was like, I was like, this is great. <laughs> like, I'm like, whoa. Actually at like something lower than like 10 HP lost. That's crazy. <laughs> it's also just because like for some reason they just never hit me. <laughs> 
And even if they did, like, I'm boring, and I play- like, well, Corn is also my first character, but, like, I, I played a Totem of the Bear Barbarian, so just, like, resistance to everything. So, like, it's like, I hit you for, like, like, 24. No, you don't. You hit me for 12, actually. What type of dragon is this? He's a wyvern. Puddles is a wyvern. Even though the player is a Drake Warden Ranger. They homebrewed it to be a wyvern. want a dragon with four wings. I designed an Eidolon for my friend who had a, like seven pairs of wings. That was pretty cool. Seven or eight pairs of wings. It was really fun to design a uh, design arc. Where is it? That was a, let me let me pull that out. I feel like I pull that out so often, but I'm gonna do it again. I don't care. Cause I just like talking about this design. Cause it was just so fun to work on. <laughs> yeah, Ark was really fun to work on. They're they're not dragon wings. They're, they're like feathered wings. But again, kind of pushing the idea of what a dragon is to begin with. But yeah, like all of the workable wings. Like they had like wings covering their mouth and then wings for ears. And like two pairs of wings on the neck and then another like pair of wings on the back one pair of wings underneath the body and then two wings for the tails like I, I'm, I'm proud of this idea like the two wings that spread out into like double tails that was pretty cool but yeah it's like it's like one two three four five six seven pairs of wings the neck wings are fully functional It was a fun design to work on. Arc was so weird. They look like your angel vibes. Yeah, it's celestial. So I was like, I was like, kind of wanted that babe look the accurate look. Literally just a fighter jet as a bird, true. Do you think a dragon with moth wings could work? I've seen a lot of people design like fey like that. Like if they have like a fey dragon. These like butterfly wings or moth wings. A wing's a wing, so <laughs> if you're gonna put it on a big creature, you just gotta make the wings bigger. That's all. Look 
goodness. Family's home early. It might snow. It's been snowing for months. <laughs> Over here. Woo, Canada! Learn to draw wings from my video it helps so much. I'm glad. Wings are nice, are really satisfying to draw once you kind of get into them. I was gonna say nice and easy, and I'm like, not always. <laughs> Sometimes they're kind of rough. Wings are arms with long fingers. So fun. It's true. Yeah. It's very true. Wings are just arms with very long fingers. I really don't draw puddles that often, actually. So I'm like, I always have to look at references. <laughs> For how I designed this dragon. <laughs> Those puddles fit in the house. In modern, <laughs> we I whenever I'm involved in any kind of D and D campaign, there's always a modern AU. In modern AU, Pierce is this really famous chef, so they have a br pretty large like apartment penthouse. Pierce and Corn live in the same place. Uh, Pierce is Corn's like legal guardian. But uh, puddles in canon is very small. Puddles in canon is only about, like, that big. <laughs> Compared to Pierce! He's a little larger now, um, but he's only- a, he's pretty small. He's still a pretty small wyvern. Dinosaur tutorials? No. Dinosaurs would be pretty similar to how I teach birds anyways. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't find much content to teach in that, I guess. What is my mother doing downstairs? I can just hear her. <laughs> Who is home right now? Oh no, you know what? My father is home too. <laughs> I just remembered. Puddles change seasons? Yes, he does. Changes seasons along with Pierce. It's an Eldrin. Can't forget the Serratus interior. I was gonna say I heard someone scream, oh you heard her? My apologies. my favorite fantasy creature? That's a really good question. I have no clue. I guess if we're going, like, with classic fantasy creatures, then, like, the dragon, hands down. But, like, if I'm getting more specific, that's too tough. I also apologize if you can hear the truck outside. I'm not closing my window, because we have, like, three minutes left, and I'm it's way too hot in this room. But... You know. 
C'est la vie. How big could puddles get? This big. <laughs> the point of pod like puddles is gonna eventually be large enough to the point where Pierce could like ride him. Like fly with puddles. Pierce for scale, by the way, is six foot four. So it's not like Pierce is short. <laughs> Pierce is quite tall. Pierce is a dragon rider. Pierce is a Drake Warden. That's that is that's his uh, ranger class in um in D and D Beyond, or for D and D. He's a he's a Drake Warden ranger. So yeah, he's he's themed around like dragons and nature and the seasons. <clears throat> Heard a beeping sound. Had to check to see if it was on my end. It might be the truck outside. I apologize. How many feet tall is Puddles? In canon right now, he's maybe like four feet tall. Four feet, three foot something. Because corn is about three foot five, I think. So like, he's probably a little just over that by now because he's getting bigger in campaign. We're pretty much done. I just need to, like, get this other wing <laughs> down and we're all good here. Dragon, our human friend? Well, Pierce isn't a human. <laughs> Pierce is an elegant elf. Um, there, so, Puddles is, like... In canon, so this is more of like a modern kind of illustration, but in canon, um, Pierce found Puddles' egg in the snow, and he has like raised Puddles from like hatching till like now. Like, he's not Puddles isn't this large in canon. Um, I just felt like drawing him large, but um, they're like best buds. <laughs> Only use two layers. Uh, T stands for thin line, um, and then D stands for diagram. Like I, I have my own shorthand. Yeah, it's, it's, I've only done lines and oops, lines in a sketch, so it's not like I need a ton of layers anyway.
another like just general art tip notice how i just kind of continued to go back into that line like i tried to get it all in one swoop really fast it will it will look a lot better if you do your lines in one go like i promise it's better than trying to do them in multiple goes Like one long line rather than like a bunch of little ones tends to look a lot nicer okay okay i think that's where we're calling it <laughs> i think that's all good i think we're good um thank you all so much for joining this stream um Thank you all so, so much for joining. If you don't know too much about us, been here. Is this here? If this is your first time here, don't know too much about us. We are not just at the YouTube channel. We're also at Art Studio. Be sure to check out the classes we offer, wingcanvas.com. Um, we're still in our winter term. I think I actually have a couple of spots in some of my classes. I don't think so, but I might. <laughs> um, but there are lots of spots in other classes as well. If you'd like to sign up for those, again, wingcanvas.com. You can check out the classes. Um, this file that you see in front of you, and the lesson-ish thing will both be available as JPEGs on our Discord, exclamation point Discord, join in, uh, talk to people, say hi to other art nerds. I'm in there, like, sometimes. <laughs> so if you'd like to chat with some of the people at the studio, other art nerds, sometimes me, sometimes other streamers, uh, feel free to pop in there, say hello. But if you'd like my working files, this one is probably not going to be a working file. There are literally two layers. But if you'd like the working files to any of my works, you're going to have to join our Patreon or become a YouTube member uh, for general perks, such as working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and early access YouTube videos. Check all of those out, uh, again, at both our Patreon and our YouTube membership. Next week... What are we doing next week? That's a real dang good question. Um... YouTube studio... Or no, not studio, no! Wait, am I even... Am I even streaming next week? I don't think it's me. It's not me! So next week is not me. It's gonna be, uh, Josh who's going to be streaming next week, uh, how to animate a walk cycle in Krita. We've done a walk cycle before, but um, thank you for the $10, Sue, and thank you for the $2, Joe. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, but yes, we are going to... So next week is going to be Josh. You're going to be animating in Krita with him. This Sunday is going to be how to draw a rose. Um, who's, who's doing this one? With Iggy. You're gonna be drawing a rose with Iggy this summit this Sunday, um, but walk cycles will be next week with Josh. So, thank you all so so much for joining, and I'll see y'all next week. Or no, I'll see y'all in a couple weeks. Au revoir. Bye bye.